Hello everyone, I'm very glad to welcome you all to our today's webinar. As you already know, this webinar is about how you can effectively use interactive content to create your lessons. We will talk about the value of such content, the nature of its use, and also learn how to create such a template, which you can see on your screen, for our students. I also want to remind you all that we have product specialists on hand to answer your questions in the chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. At the end of the webinar, I will also try to answer some of your questions. Okay, first of all, I would like to briefly talk about how interactive content greatly affects the learning process. I'm not going to waste your time, so let's talk about the main advantages of such content. First of all, interactive content allows you to boost your learning's engagement, improve your students' knowledge retention ability, and of course, it helps your students to learn more efficiently. Using interactive content for your lessons, you can always create a complete interactive lesson and see the results of your students even being on a distance. That's cool, right? Okay, guys, let's take a look at, let's take a look at the template I have created. I decided to take this example because it contains a different form of interactive content in once. As you can see, it contains a flip cards, so your students can learn some words. It contains an audio files in case they want to know their pronunciation. And in the end, they have some mechanics, uh, the memory game in this case, and <clears throat> the matching one. So the students can check their knowledge. Okay. I think this template is visually pleasant and understandable for both adults and children. I hope that ability to create something like this will be useful for every teacher. So I'll not dwell on it too much. Let's get started. Okay. On today's webinar, I'll be using the interactive platform. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with it, but if you're not, then I recommend you learning more about it because it's just a powerful tool for creating interactive lessons. And I personally like it. As you can see, I have already logged into my profile and browsing the template gallery. Here you can find some game concepts and suitable mechanics for yourself. Maybe look for some inspiration for your lessons or even use a ready-made lesson for your students. For example, you can jump straight to the fascinating education block and check some templates right here. Since you choose the one you like, you can just click preview to see how it works. <clears throat> check everything you need. And in case if you love this template and you want to make any changes, you just have to click use this layout and spend one or two minutes of your time to change this template according to your needs. But since I want to show you the whole process from the start, let's do this. <clears throat> I go to the main page of my account and for creating a new project from scratch, I'm going to use create button right here. So I click this button and go for create from scratch. Okay, <clears throat> perfect. Let's delete this text block since we just don't need it. To do this, I click remove button and confirm my action. Okay, so let's pretend that we are English teachers and we want to teach our students some new words. To do this, I click on all blocks button, which you can see right here, and select Flip card. Flip cards are great learning too, and I'll show you why. Okay, let's add the first image. <clears throat> Before this, I think I will delete this text since I just don't need it for my lesson. You can keep it if you need and change image proportions for, let's say this one. It's not necessary. You don't have to do this. This is just how I usually do this. Okay. So let's add the first image. To do this, I click Upload button under the front image sign. 
And now you can see my library of pictures. When you start doing this, your library maybe will be empty for the first time. But it, that's not a problem because you have a few options how you can add pictures in this case. First of all, you can upload an image directly from your computer. In case if you have images downloaded from Google, only if copyright allows it for sure. Or if you don't and your library is still empty, you always can use Unsplash library. I'll show you how it works. You just click on this link and write in the search box, whatever you like. For example, your session. Okay, here you can select any picture you like and add it to your project. But since I have pictures for this project, I will go to my library and add the first image. So I mark this and click place image. Okay, that's good. As you can see, in this picture, we can only see the silhouette of a person. Let's add a second picture to the back of our flip card. I click Upload under the back image sign and select my second image. I click on this and click Place Image. OK. So we're done with the first flip card. Let me show you how it works. To do this, I click Preview button to preview my project. This is a very useful feature, and I highly rec recommend you to use it because you can check the current state of your project. So in case of any mistakes, you can you know qu quickly fix them. OK. So I hope you can see this flip card right now. OK. <clears throat> so what's, go what's going to happen right now? Your students. Let's imagine that their children, for example, will see your front image. Most likely, they will immediately try to guess who is depicted inside the silhouette. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. And often, students are trying to guess, even if not in English, but if you're in your native language, for example. And that's very good, because at this moment, they become interested in. After that, you can make a adopting face and say like, hmm, do you think so? Do you really think, is this a musician? And after this, just flip the card. And when everyone is happy when, with how they well guess, just teach them how to say the same thing in English. It's a musician, musician, just great. Okay. So now things get even more interesting. Let's go back to our editor. To do this, I click on this button right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it is very good if you can explain to your students how to pronounce the word, but what to do if you're teaching online or just post this lesson on your website? how to teach a student to pronounce a word correctly? And the answer is an audio. Let me show you how it works. So if you click on all blocks button right here, you will see that we can embed an audio to our template. Let's select this item. Okay. So now you can simply add an audio file here. Here, we have a few options. First of all, you can simply add an audio file from your computer by clicking Upload Audio button. <clears throat> you can record your own voice on your computer in advance and then upload it here, or you can find some files on the internet, of course, if copyright allows it for sure. But what to do if you don't have such options, if your computer is empty, but you want to use some audios? There is another option, which is called Record Voice. I will show you how it works. You just click on this button, Record Voice. And when we start to click on this button, our voice is start recording. As you can see, it makes some changing. And after we're done, we just click on this button again. 
and we're done. Here we can rename our file according to our needs. We can listen to it. It works well. And after this, just click Save. Just one minute for your time, and you can use it for your project. That's amazing. Since I just don't need it in this time, I just click here and choose Delete. <clears throat> but what to do if the microphone is broken and you cannot record your own voice? The internet doesn't work and you just, you know, feeling lazy and just do not have enough time. It's not a problem because even in this case, you can use free interactive library. It's located right here. You can click on it. And as you can see, we have a few folders for different English topics, which you can use. For example, today our topic is occupation, as far as you know. So we choose this folder <clears throat> and select the first word. So our first word is a musician, right? So we search for it here. Here you can listen to it. It works well. So we mark it and click place audio. That's it. Let's see how it works again. I click preview. You already know how to use this function. Okay. So now when your students know what is it, they can learn this word, but now they can also learn how to pronounce this word by using an audio. They just click on it and can learn. That's amazing. If I had studied according to such templates, I would have been really happy, I swear. Okay, let's go back to our editor and add a few more words for our students. A flip card and then an audio file. But now we actually don't have to create this from scratch because we already have some flip cards, right? In this case, I will just click clone button. I click on it. And now we have the exact same copy of this flip card. The only problem is, as you can see, this flip card is above our audio, which is no problem at all. We just click move down right here, and that's it. All we have to do right now is to change our images. We change the first one, the front image, to our second job. This case will be a builder. Okay, I select the first image, click place image and back image as well. Choose this and place image. That's it. Just 30 seconds of your time and everything works, right? That's amazing. Of course, it's more fast for me because I already have some pictures in my library, but I just want to remind you that in case if you don't, you can always use Unsplash library right here, which works just fine. You so click on it go for Builder and select any picture you like. For example, this one, it also works. Let me change it again, since I just <clears throat> already have some pictures of this project and that's it. Same with the audio file. We can just clone it, move it down and upload a new one by clicking change right here. So we click on it. Go to free interactive library again, occupations, and search for a builder. Place audio. Great. We can click preview to check if everything works fine. We can flip the card. We can listen how it works. Flip another card. That's great. Let's go back to our editor and teach some more words for the students. Let's do five, for example. <clears throat> okay, we have a musician for our students. We have a builder. Who is next? I clone this block, move it down, and click change for the front image. Okay, our next picture will be about waiter. Let's add the first image and back image. Then we just clone our audio file move it down and change this audio to the other one, waiter. 
place audio. That's great. Very fast, very simple. And you can, all, you can also use all of these audios for free. That's amazing. We click preview and we can present this to our students. Who is it? This is a musician. Let's learn how to pronounce this word. That's perfect. If you're teaching at school or if, or if you're teaching online, both of these ways works perfect. Okay, let's add two more flip cards. First will be a fireman this time. <clears throat> Back image, fireman. Then we just clone the audio file, move it down and change it. Go to the occupations and select fireman. Okay, this is just an example for sure. I just took the English topic as an example. If you're a geography teacher or if you're teaching literature, for example, you can you can also use this. It, it works perfect every time. Okay, we add the last flip card. Front image will be Vernerian this time. And back image. So all we have to do is just clone our audio file move it down and change it using free interactive library. Okay, that's it. We click preview to check if everything works. If no any mistakes, builder, waiter, fireman, and vernarian. Good. Okay. Okay, so I went back to the editor. And as you can see, we already made some flip cards with some words for students. The students learn the words, repeat these words. What next? Usually I invite students to check how they learn this object, but in an interesting way for sure. To do this, Interactive has many mechanics that you can use. For example, make a memory game with occupations or trivia quiz. For example, in the memory game, students have to match an audio file with the picture of with occupations. And in trivia, in trivia quiz, your students can like point, they can spot which is which, you know? <clears throat> there are many options and you can choose any of them. Okay, let's take a poll. We will have a memory game and a trivia quiz as a test for students. Let's do this right now. I already have poll here. So guys, if I can ask you to vote for the mechanics, I'll be so happy if you can do this for me. Which one do you prefer? The memory game or the trivia quiz? Please vote for the option that will, you will be more interested in seeing in this template and I'll make it for you. Okay, so Let's spend just one or two minutes to make sure that everyone is voted and I'll show you how it works. I can also see some votes in the chat. Some people asking for a trivia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's wait maybe for one more minute. Okay, 30 seconds, one minute. And then we are at end voting. Mm -hmm. But actually, as I can see, the trivia is already a winner. So I think we will go with it. Okay, I end voting, guys, because as I can see, the trivia is winner of this. Okay, as you can see, everything is fair. You choose this. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> then let's do it. Let me show you my screen again. Okay, <clears throat> so trivia, right? <clears throat> to start to do this, we just have to click on all blocks button again, as always, nothing new. So we click on it and choose trivia quiz on the left side of your screen. So we click on it. 
Here, you can choose one of the templates, but since I want to show you the whole process from the very beginning, I will use the simplest one, for example, this one. Of course, you can use any of this and just edit it. It's, it's just more simple, it's just more fast, but I want to show you the whole process. So let's pick this one. Okay, we scroll down. And for start editing, all we have to do is click on edit button. We click on it. Good. I'm suggesting to not using start screen in this case, because this quiz right now in the context of our whole lesson, right? So we might just don't need start screen in this case. But if you do, you just can make this option on, fill the header, description, wherever you like, and use it. But I just don't need it this time. That's why I turn it off. And go straight to the questions tab. Start doing some magic. For example, our first question will be, which one is a builder? For example, and we will present an answer, not in text, but in images. To do this, I just switch to the images right here. And as you can see, right now we can upload an image to our answer. For example, the first answer. First option, I click change and select a picture of a builder. I'm just reminded that you can use Unsplash library, go for builder right here. And I made a mistake, sorry. Yeah, and you can use this picture as well. It's, it's very fast and simple. But since I have pictures, I just want to show you how it works. Okay, I click on Builder and go for Place Image. That's great. Here, as you can see, we can mark this answer as a correct or not. But since our question is which one is a builder and this is actually a builder, I mark this answer as correct. <clears throat> the answer option number two will be a musician. Why not? Let's pick a musician this time. And you can add even more answers to like confuse your students a bit can add answer, change, and add a waiter this time, for example. Doesn't matter, it's up to you. If you have more than one correct answer, you can mark both of them. Yeah, so the question one is ready. <laughs> it just takes one minute of your time, right? Very simple and very fast. But if you want to add more questions, you just click add questions. For example, let's add another one to just show you how it works. So I, I don't need question image, only here. And our second question will be which one is a fireman, for example. OK, <clears throat> our first answer will be present as a veterinarian this time, let's say. The second one is a fireman, and we'll pick Fire as a correct answer. Don't forget to do this because this is actually the correct answer. And the first option, let's say musician. Okay, so we're done. Our questions is ready. We can jump straight to the results section. Uh, your students will see the results depending on how much uh, correct answer they get. For example, the result one, if they get uh, zero or one correct answer and Result two will be shown in case if they will do two correct answer. It depends on how much questions you have in your quiz. Since we have just two, so that's it. Here you can change the result image, final result. It's the image that your students will see right after they finish your quiz. Let's add the result image for the excellent result. For example, I have this image, perfect sign. You can click on it. And in case if some students will not pass the test, unfortunately, you can go for like Unsplash library, go for sad, for example, and choose a someone who is sad, you know, like this, for example. So we're done. We just click save. And now we can watch to see how it works. Just click preview this time. Okay. Scroll down to see our new mechanic right here. So I just remind you that students learn our words, they flip the cards, they learn how to pronounce this word. Okay, so right now they have to guess which one is a builder. 
Option number one, they pick this. This is correct. They click next. They have to guess which one is a fireman. They click on here. This is very good because like, you know, they have to use not only their knowledge on English, but also their memory to play these kind of games. It, it's, it's always useful, not only for kids, but also for an adult, because since I understand that this is just the pictures, seems like it's something for kids, but when you can interact with something, it's better for your memory. I, I tried it many times and it works just fine, I swear. Okay, they can see the results. Perfect, it works. Trivia works just fine for this. <clears throat> and in case if your students will make a mistake, for example, the wrong ones, they'll get a, this sad boy <laughs> and they, get, they can try again. Okay, that's good. I hope it was useful for you. Let's go back to our editor. That was one of the mechanics that you can use to uh, check the knowledge of your students. Yeah, that was trivia quiz. <clears throat> okay. So another mechanics that um, I think I should show you is calling matchup. It's a really powerful and perfect tool for learning. Let me show you how it works. I click on all, all blocks button right here. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I must drink some water. Okay, and go, go for a matchup this time on the left side of our screen. We click on here. And select the team blade. Okay, right here. So, as before, all we have to do is just to click Edit button to start edit our quiz, and we will see a pairs tab. <clears throat> okay, for my quiz, I want to keep just five of these pairs since we have only five new words for our students, right? So let's delete some pairs we don't need by clicking Remove button right here. So I remove this, this, and this. Cool. We have five pairs, right? <clears throat> OK. For each card, we can choose a text, image, or even audio option. And this is very important. I will show you why. OK, for the first card, let's pick an image option, for example. I click on image and select the first job, let's say Builder again. I click on a Builder and click Place Image. OK, right now, let's do some magic. For our second card, let's choose an audio this time. I click on this button. Use the free interactive library this time. Don't have to spend any extra minute of my time. Go for Occupations and choose a builder. Select it and click Place Audio. And the first pair is ready. Just one minute of your time, very fast. I'll show you how it works a little bit later. OK, pair number two. We add an image. Select Fireman and place this image. Then go for a audio, go to the library, I forgot who it was, fireman. <laughs> okay, occupations and go for fireman. And our second pair is ready. Okay, pair number three. We scroll down to see a uh, musician, place image. We add an audio file, go to the library, occupations, and select the musician. Place audio. Pair number four will, will be a veterinarian, right? Place image, go for an audio, free interactive library, occupations, veterinarian, place audio. And the last one, add image, waiter. Add audio, occupations, and pick for waiter, place audio. That's it. Very simple, very fast, and you can use it for free. Just 
pick any of these audios, mix this card. You can add more pairs if you need, doesn't matter. Okay, and let's just pick the final screen. Here I will only change the final image right here. For example, let's pick this one, for example. I have this picture, place image. Yeah, and I just remind you that you can edit this text according to your needs. Just delete this, for example, and click Save. Okay. All pairs are ready, right? So let's click Preview to see how it works. So your students flip the cards, they learn the pronunciation, then they can check their knowledge by using the trivia quiz this time. But this mechanics, I absolutely love it. Let's check how it works. <clears throat> your students open it, and the, all they have to do is listen to the audio file. They listen to it, and now they have to pick the right one. It's way harder because they have to know which is which. And they pick the waiter and drag and drop it right here. Amazing. Then next one, veterinarian. They pick this picture, drop it here. Musician, fireman, and a builder. And since they did this, they get the final result right here. From my point of view, it works just fine. And you can use it for any single subject would you like to teach. It's not only in English, geography, doesn't matter. And you can use another mechanics as well. We just have only one hour for our webinar, unfortunately. In other case, I will <laughs> spend more time to show you the other mechanics because you can use a personality quiz, you can use find a pair game, memory game is amazing. You can also use hidden objects, which is amazing for geography, where your students have to uh, like spot on, you can uh, upload the map of something and your students have to spot animals, for example, or cities or countries, doesn't matter, it's limited only by your imagination. Okay, but Maybe next time I'll show you how it works as well. Okay, so <clears throat> right now what we can do is to add a header for our project. It's not necessary, you, you don't have to do this, but I just prefer to do this because it just makes your project looks more well-designed, you know? We have a few options to add a header. <clears throat> you can use all blocks button as before. Click here and choose image option. You can do it even faster and go for add image right here. It also works just fine. <clears throat> but I personally use another option, which is the fastest one. Just click on plus sign right in the place where you want to pass something. For example, I want, I want to pass the header on the head of our project. So I click here and choose image. OK, and here I have an image. Uh, yes, I have this image. Let's click on it and go for place image. Yeah, and, and, and it's just great. We can preview our project. I think it works great. It is very interesting for kids, but for adults as well. I think this is just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, so I go back to the editor and if you want, you can also add a text as a transition between your mechanics. This might be useful if you're teaching online, for example, and your students might, um, they have to read some instructions, how to use your uh, quiz, how to use your lesson correctly. You can use, you can go for like plus icon here, go for text and write any text you want right here. You can even write this text in your own language, in, in your native language. It's just, if you need this. Here you can select the phone, size, make some effects, and that's it. But if you're a school teacher, you will probably don't need it because you can speak to your students itself and it just works without text. So in case if you need this, you can use it. Since I just don't need this this time, I click remove button. I remove this block and that's it. 
Okay. So, seems like our lesson is completely ready. Let's publish it by clicking the publish button right here. This is very important because you have to publish your project. You, I mean, you must do this if you want your students to see this project. So I click on this button. Okay. And now we can share our lesson with our students. For example, by sending them a link, you can just copy this link here or here and send it. For example, in your group chat, WhatsApp, Facebook, doesn't matter. Then your student open this link and then, then they will see your project. They can just pass your project. <clears throat> if you're teaching in Zoom, for example, or in Skype, you can also just copy this link, send it right in the chat and your student will open it and you can pass this together with your students. This works just very fine. Okay, and you can also get a QR code. Uh, you can even print it on a list of a paper and to, like give to your students. It's only lim limited by your imagination, as I said before. And if you have your own website, if you're an online teacher, you can use this function, embed on your website. You can just embed all of this lesson on your website. Your students will be so happy, I swear. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. That's actually it. In case if you if you're a school teacher, you don't have like WhatsApp groups, Facebook groups, you can just open this lesson on a huge monitor or projector in your classroom and just show it to your students. It's it also works just fine. I did it maybe a couple of times and it works. It works. Okay. So <clears throat> Let's watch the lesson together. And if you have any questions, then ask in the chat and we will do our best to answer you. All flip cars works perfect. You can learn pronunciation, then check the knowledge of your students. Builder, just great. Okay. Let me look at the chat. Maybe you already have some questions to ask. I'll be happy to answer you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, give me one minute, please. I will search for some questions in the chat. Uh -huh. I, as I can see, there are a lot of questions. Maybe I will pick the most interesting for everyone and try to answer. <clears throat> Just give me one minute, please. Mm -hmm. There are some technical questions. I hope Anastasia already have answered. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can see these questions. Okay. I'll start to pick questions one by one, if you guys don't mind, and I'll try to be helpful. Okay, the first question from Alan, thank you for joining our webinar. We're so happy to see you here. If we share the link in the chat box on Zoom, can every student play the game separately at the same time? And the answer is yes, of course. If you send the link to the chat box, if I got your questions correct for sure, your students can open the link and all of them can like spend their time to play trivia quiz, memory games at, 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 the, at the same time. It's just, there are no limits for this. You know what's even better to do? I'll show you how it works. For example, uh, that's like a, just a trick uh, which you can use. Let me edit this quiz again. <clears throat> for example, uh, as most of you know, we have memory game. So if we pick for a memory game here, Yes, let's edit this. Um, we have an options called number card packs. You can click on this button and let me just add some pictures. I just want you to see how it works. For example, this one, right? So, okay, I click save. Yeah, and preview. 
<clears throat> okay, so for example, that's just one of the features that you can use for your students. If you're teaching on Zoom and you have some conversation with your students, you can ask someone to pick the card. For example, um, okay, Michael, you can pick any card you like. And Michael say, go for seven, for example. Okay, you flip this card. Uh, now we don't have a picture since we just didn't upload it, but let's imagine this is a fireman, for example, picture of a fireman. Then you say, okay, Monica, can you pick another card? And Monica say one, the card number one. You flip this card. And for example, this is like not matching card. Okay, then you ask another students and students step by step, they're trying to memorize which is which. This is very interesting. This is like a little bit of competition for your students. It's very good. It worked just fine. Okay, I hope I was helpful. In case if you have any more questions, please ask. I'll go for pick another question as well. <clears throat> Give me a few minutes, please. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, ho I hope it was useful for you. Thank you for coming. I might get wrong, but I saw some question about uh, question bank, but I cannot find it, unfortunately, right now, because uh, many questions in the chat. So just in case, just in case if someone asking, uh, we already have some bank of questions, which you can use. Let me show you how it works very quick. Maybe it will be helpful just for the people. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay. <clears throat> so we even have a template of a bank of questions. It's actually right here. So I click on edit button. Yeah. So here, I will not show you the whole process since it just takes more time. But actually here, uh, I showed you how to create the questions by like manually, you know, but actually if you turn this box on, you can use questions from question bank. There are some uh, instructions how to do this. You can check these instructions of, uh, on our help center. Yeah, you can just write, uh, you just can go to our help center, go for question bank in the search field, and you will write, write uh, you will, sorry, you will find an instruction how to use this. So yeah, we click save, we publish our project, for example, when we import some bank. Yeah, and right now, um, the questions will be randomly shown from the bank. For example, in this quiz, as far as I remember, it's five questions um, from like maybe 100. And yeah, <clears throat> you can pick whatever you like. Okay, let me just click on this very fast to show you how it works. Okay, and when we start our quiz, like from the very beginning, as we can see, that's other questions comes from this list. It's just, we can see the other ones, the new questions are coming. Okay, so I hope it was useful for you. Just in case, if you have any more questions, please ask in the chat. I'll try my best to help you. Okay. Okay, I can see the last question from Alan. Is there a way to talk an interactive staff person on the phone if we have questions? Uh, I think yes, of course, you have no limits. Uh, in, in case if you have any questions, you can just uh, write a message for our email. I mean, any message, if you have any questions, it's uh, if you uh, doubt which tariff plan is more suitable for you, for example, or you have any other questions, you can just write a message to the email info.interacti.me <clears throat> and then you can like, uh, uh, you can call. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can do this. Mm -hmm. Let me check if there are any more questions, guys. I think we will spend some more minutes on it. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Yes, as Anastasia said, it's also possible to schedule a call if needed. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you so much for coming. I'm so happy that that was useful for you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, guys. <clears throat> I hope I answered all of your questions. If not, I'm very apologize for this. Just it's very hard to find all the questions. I hope Anastasia have answered all of your questions as well. And it was useful for you. I would also like to ask you a question and your answer will be very important for me. Can you please tell me if you would like to see more such webinars? And if yes, what topics of the webinar uh, are you interested in? Let me please know in the chat uh, because it will be useful for the future webinars. We can teach you some more mechanics. Please let me know in the chat. This will be very useful for me. Wow, thank you so much, guys. I'm so glad that you love this. I would like you to display more different kind of games. Okay, that's not a problem for the next webinar. I will show you some more mechanics. Maybe we can pick the memory game and show you some ways how to use this. And hidden objects. I absolutely love it. I want to show you how it works. Maybe if some there are any more requests, any more ideas, please. Let me to know uh, our future webinars. Maybe we will pick this topic for discuss. The Sharon said, I will love next level tools and tips and higher education. Thank you very much as well. We will try our best to do this as well. Today's webinar will be, was more about for, maybe for kids, something, yeah. For higher education, we will do something like this as well. It was a good idea to teach, to teach vocabulary. I would like to know more about how to create a treasure hunt. Okay, treasure hunt game is also very good. There are many options how you can use this. Thank you for coming. Maybe our next webinar will be about this. Mm -hmm. I see one more request about treasure hunt. So maybe next time, yes, I will try to teach you maybe to show you some ways how we can use this. Great, great. Okay, treasure hunt is for next. Definitely. Okay. So guys, we have like a few more minutes. I think we're about to finish our webinar. If you have any more questions, you can ask. But if not, I think we're about fin to finish for today. Goodbye, Alice. Thank you so much for coming. So great. Today we have learned how to make a lesson for our students using various interactive materials. I hope it was useful for you and remember that everything is limited only by your imagination. You can create even more complex projects, experiment with formats and constantly surprise your students, you know, with new learning contexts. Okay, I wish you good luck and see you next time. Bye.